What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of career mode. This is episode number 86 We started days of stuff on the back of our win over Munch and Glad back away to put us through to the Champions League knockout stages So heading into the final game as we know Qualification and top spot now in the bag so I can rest all my players for that final game against Slavia Prague It's one of those things I, I, I say quite often but like to me that is that is like just one very simple tip for European group stages And after last year I probably shouldn't be giving tips but uh, you know, I, I really do feel as though, and I know it sounds a bit obvious, but the quicker you get the wins, the better. And I know, again, that sounds really, really obvious. But what I mean is that, you know, going to match day one, match day two, you don't think, oh, well, we've got time to sort it out. Honestly, like, if you if you lose or you fail to win the first two games, it's, it's troubling enough on its own, but also knowing there's more pressure heading into the final games and less opportunity to rest players and play fringe players as well. But the quicker you get those results and the quicker you get those wins together, the better. And again, I know it sounds really obvious, but the main reason why is very simple. It means that heading into match day five, for example, we were already qualified. It was only top spot that was up for grabs. But for match day six, we can lose to Slavia Prague at home 20-0. And whilst it will be embarrassing and one of the worst defeats in football history, we'll still be going through as group winners, you know? So it means that in the match day six, we'll rest every single player. And as we know, in December, when match day six comes around in early to mid-December, um, you know, games come thick and fast in practically every single league. You might have cup games, for example. If you're in England, you might have EFL cup games. Um, but you certainly have a lot of Premier League games and uh, certainly a lot of league games in the Serie A as well before the winter break too. Knowing that on match day six, you ain't got to play a single one of your starters and the result means absolutely nothing. It's a, it's a huge, huge luxury. And just one simple tip I can give for managing fixture congestion the best you can. Anyway, heading into the first game of this episode, Sam Dory away finally clicking with Juventus. Yeah, we talked about it in the last episode, had a bit of a ramble in the last episode, but we, we struggled out of the blocks with Juve, they stumbled quite a bit. It was two wins in our first five or six games. It was a really, really tough start with Juventus, as I was expecting. But since then, man, we have turned it around and we have been on fire. Heading into this game away against Sam Doria, no such problems. We were three goals up at the break. The only negative we're seeing that Chiesa went down with a knock and was eventually forced off of Moyes Keane, but this just goes to show you, going forward, we've got a, a solid, solid option on the bench that could play left wing, right wing, or even through the middle at striker as well. Moyes Keane. Yep, if you're watching my my player save right now, then firstly, thank you. Really hope you guys are enjoying that. I'm loving it right now. Um, but Keane was my bro with Benfica. Spoilers, he's now moved on. But Moyes Keane is on the bench in this team. But Keane is so good, man. I mean, so, so good. Whenever he's on the pitch, I expect him to get an assist or a goal. And in this game, brought him on right before the break. Took Chiesa off. We were freeing it up, so I didn't need to keep on playing him. And he ended up getting our fourth goal as Vlahovic got our fifth for the match ball and the hat trick as well with 16 minutes to go. Duzan Vlahovic. You know, I mentioned before, this guy, there is no weak spot to this guy's game. It is unbelievable. He is like... Honestly, I, I, you know, it's it's like, it's crazy. There, there, there is another striker, obviously, you might know his name, Erling Haaland. You know, tall, strong, rapid, intense shot power, great clinical finish. You know, we, we've got the Serie A Haaland right now, and his name is Dusan Vlahovic. The Serbian with the finish gives us our fifth goal in a 5-0 win. And to start the season off, well, I've... I've really been impressive when going forward, but kind of what I was expecting, really. We have had a few knocks, though, and another injury here. Chiesa's, frankly, was just a bruise, but for Bruno Guimaraes, already his second injury of the season for Bruno Guimaraes. Very strange. No injury-prone tag on the guy, but already a second injury of the season. And this time it's a bit more serious than his first one when he was done for four weeks. Now three months injury for Guimaraes. But, you know, I talked at the start of the season how depth was my concern with Juventus. We didn't really have a fixed squad after culling most of the deadwood here. I said we do need to improve that, and I definitely feel like I learnt my lesson from the season with Bayern Munich last year. We had a really thin squad with Bayern last year, really, really thin squad, and we had quite a few injuries along the way as well. None more notable than Schlotter of XACL at the start of the season. 
that was tough. That was really, really tough. It's one of the reasons why we went out of the cup so early in the DFB Pokal at home in the round of uh, the third round um, to SC Freiburg because we just didn't have the depth to cope with fixture congestion and injuries as well. But with Juventus, I think I've I think I've done a much better job of having the depth here. You know, going forward, like I said, you know, we've got Keane who fills in when needed. Any of the front three positions you can play them all. I've got the youngsters, Ribeiro and uh, Rossi, the new gens. Then I've got Sule and also Carrera, the good young Juventus youngsters in real life as well that are both developing really nicely and obviously in midfield you know you would have seen my depth it's fantastic you know this is why I always say check the free agents pool because Jorginho and Bove have both had quite a lot of minutes already this season Bove released by Roma picked up on a free right now in the prime of his career and whilst Jorginho is down to 81 overall and his mid-30s I really like him coming off the bench with great passing stats to dictate tempo in late game situations and kill the clock. So, you know, we, we got those guys and, and then we got Moretti who we brought back and McKenney who are both on the bench and outside of those four, we've also got Renokia who can fill in if need be as well. So I've got five CMs waiting in the wings if one of the three of Fagioli, Guimar Reyes or Ricky go down. Five. Five CMs that are all interchangeable and can play different roles. I mean, that is that is one of the big reasons why I was failing last season to, to really handle competing on all three fronts. And again, why I went out of the cup so early in the DFB Pokal with Bayern Munich. I just did not have the depth. And, and again, that's a, a very brief tip, really. But if you, if you are a major European side... I know it's very tempting just to have like a really, really amazing first 11 and a solid bench. But if it comes at the cost of no decent players in the reserves and just a bunch of kids that are like <laughs> mid 60 overall, if you get a couple of injuries, then um, yeah, you'll find out very quickly you might be in a little bit of trouble. So yeah, if, you, if you're like me and you play for realism and also have the injury sliders quite high as well, Definitely, definitely, definitely don't compromise on death because it's a long old season. It's a long old season when you're competing for major honours. It really, really is. You know, if you're like a, a mid table side with limits and expectations, maybe you can get away with a lack of death. And if you've got to compete for all three of the competitions, or possibly four competitions you're in as well. Yeah, make sure you stack your squad. It's really, really important. Anyway, uh, on the back of back-to-back wins against Sampdorian at home to Venezia uh, as well. Man, how glad am I to see the Serie B is now in FIFA as well, man. Venezia, fashion FC, if you will. Uh, beating by three goals. Still. That, that uh, third goal, by the way, that Bergvine dribble down the right. Man, that was unbelievable. I have to say as well, like Bergwijn, I was struggling with him at the start of the season, but now I'm really clicking with the Dutch winger. Man. He's, a, he's been on fire for me. But won the game 3-0 and then came from behind to beat Slavia Prague 2-1 in the final game of the Champions League group stage. Well, obviously meant nothing in the end. Uh, Felix Carrera came up with a last-minute winner, but obviously meant nothing in the end. But it was still nice to know we didn't lose on the final group game and our undefeated run continues ever since match day one in the Champions League group. So we top it. We're already top regardless and we now do qualify uh, with five wins in six and as you see the teams we could face here well you know I say it all the time you know if you top your group in the Champions League obviously it is a bonus because you're facing a runner-up but it is the Champions League so you're still going to face someone quite tough anyway there are a lot of really tough teams remaining but did you see in Group E I think it was West Ham West Ham are in the Champions League and they're going into the knockout stages they finished runners-up. We finished top. We might well have them. No offence to my Irons fans, but uh, fingers crossed, I'm kind of hoping it is going to be West Ham. Even so, uh, heading into the following game, uh, Inter Milan at way at the San Siro here. You would have seen, by the way, that final group table... We scored 22 goals in six games. Now, I've mentioned before that I've been playing career mode and doing videos on YouTube for over a decade now. There's not, there's not that many things that are left for me to do, if I'm being totally honest here. But uh, I don't think I've ever scored more than 20 goals in a Champions League group stage before. So I think that might be my very first. I think that might be my very, very first, you know, what you'd call majorly dominant group. Scoring over 20 goals in the group stage. 22 in total. And, uh, you know, unfortunately for my Celtic fans, it came really at the expense of Celtic, scoring seven at Celtic Park and then five 
at the uh, the Allianz Stadium as well. But even so, yeah, what a fantastic record that is, man. 22 goals in six games. And to think we lost the opening group game as well. Even so, first group winners. And uh, yeah, following the goalless draw away to Santa against Inter Milan. Got to be honest, there's very little going on in that game whatsoever. Onana made a couple of good saves, had a ball cleared off the line. But other than that, not many things going on in that game. It was our first slip up in the Serie A in quite a while. Those, the undefeated streak did survive. Heading into the following game, Sassuolo at home, thinking this will be a bang career as we come towards the final game before the winter break. Well, right before the break in this one, Neil Wapai scores perhaps the easiest goal he'll ever score in his career. Yep, the former Brentford, Brighton and Everton striker. Um, doesn't even take a shot. He scores with a stand tackle. Yeah, uh, I said once before, and I'll say it again, it's really cool how now like intense presses, both from the AI and from you, can cause a mistake. But um, that wasn't really the case for an intense press to force me into an error. I just didn't release the ball anywhere close to quickly enough. <laughs> yep. Well, Pai rolls Donnarumma on his line, turns in with the stand tackle, but thankfully we would get back on level terms soon after the restart. Yep, Rossi off the bench, getting a goal for me, uh, the youngster, the new gen. Got a couple of good youngsters here. I mentioned them earlier, you know, Rossi and Ribeiro. I like them both, to be fair. Really, really solid. But uh, yeah, he found our level and he made it 1-1. And this is just one of those games where I was thinking, how am I not in front in this game? How am I not leading? Missed a couple of really, really great chances as we were still tied and Moyes Keane hitting the crossbar uh, in the second half, about half an hour ago as well. Really should have won these games. Missed chances, failing to see me get back to winning ways. So back-to-back -back games without a win. We are still undefeated in this area, but proof in the pudding right there. This has not been a season of dominance or anything close to that. Yes, we're through in the Champions League group stage. Yes, we've topped it, and yes, we are still leading the way in this area right now, but another injury. Ricky goes down. Thankfully, that'll come during the winter break, though, so we should make it back on time for our following fixtures in this area, but right now, yes, we're five points clear, but look at that. Three teams right below us in second to fourth, all separate Separated on head, dead, and only five points behind. Yes, we're still undefeated. Yes, we're top, but there's a long way to go, and it is still very tight and congested. But that will end this episode of Karima, guys. Big thank you for watching. Hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, then please do drop a like. Most of you all have a fantastic day, and I will see you for the next episode of Karima, where the January transfer window will open very soon.